If you've been advertising with Google Ads for any amount of time, you're probably fully aware that there is tons of performance data in the platform. You can segment it by campaign, audience, your shopping products, all sorts of different segmentations. And there's lots of different metrics, whether it's clicks and costs down to conversions, understanding how things are performing by device. There's lots of stuff in there. And the problem with that is it can be difficult to see all of the information that you need in one easy view so that you can make decisions to optimize your campaigns. The good news is that there's a tool in the Google Ads interface, the reporting tool, that'll allow you to customize reports to see pretty much whatever you need to, whether it's in a table or a chart format. So today I'm gonna to go through the Google Ads reporting tool, show you how it works, and give you some examples of reports that you can start building today. When you're in the Google Ads Campaign Manager interface, and if you're in the Campaigns tab, Ad Groups tab, wherever you are over in the left-hand navigation, there are going to be ways that you can customize the data you wanna see, either by adding different columns or choosing your segment. But this is one example of a problem that we have with pulling reports within this builder as opposed to the reporting tool. If I click on segment, let's say I wanted to segment this data that I have here, this view, by week or by day. If I come down to time, you'll notice that day and week are both grayed out because the segment needs to have a shorter date range for you to be able to see it. There's too much data because I'm looking at January 1st through April 23rd and there would simply be too many rows. So this is one quick example of why you would need to use the reports builder rather than just pulling the data in the interface. So now that we've got that quick example out of the way, there are a couple of ways that you can access the reports builder in Google ads, but I'm going to show you one now and I'll show you the other at the end of the video, even though you probably already know where it is. The first one is going to be up here in this main navigation. You can just come up here and click the reports icon. You'll notice that there are some predefined reports. And for those of you who have been around in the industry for quite a while, like myself, this used to be the dimensions tab. That's why there's dimensions in parentheses for us old folks. And there are lots of preset reports that you can find here. But if you wanna to go to the full customized report builder, you simply come down to reports and click on that. Now we're on the reports manager portion of the interface. This is where you will have all of your saved reports. There are some predefined reports available here as well. But what I'm gonna do is start off with a custom report because I wanna show you the builder first and then we'll go through some of the predefined reports and how you can use some of those to your liking. So to get started, I'm just gonna come over here and click custom and we'll see the first way that we can start to customize our report is by choosing the type of report that we wanna see. Table is going to be probably the most common that you're the most familiar with. It's effectively like seeing an Excel report or the data that we just saw in the interface. We can also create more visual charts in this report builder, whether it's a line chart, column, bar, scatter, or pie chart. And I'll go through a couple examples of those, but as you can tell, there's already a lot of ways we can customize the data that we're gonna see. We can make it visual, not just have a big table worth of data. But for right now, let's go ahead and start off with a big table full of data. This is what the reports builder looks like within Google Ads. So there are a few different ways that we can customize our report, and I'll try and hit each one of them as we go through. The first thing you can do is name the report just by clicking the pencil here. You can rename it to whatever you want. But then the way that you read this section of the interface is that effectively this section over here is going to be the report itself. So you can see in real time what your results are going to be, whether you wanna get the data in the interface and start to make decisions, or if you want to customize it so that you can either download it, schedule it, what have you. You can customize the date range for whatever you want it to be, just like you can in any other portion of the Google Ads interface. But then the second section over here is going to be the tools that we have to actually build it. So for a table, you're going to end up needing different rows as well as different columns. So think of this as the different segments or levels of the account that you wanna see, whether it's campaign, keyword, audience, device, a length of time, whatever that is, you can have those as the rows. And then the columns are probably going to be mostly the performance metrics that you wanna have. So you can see the different performance metrics by the rows that are in here. All of the different options for the information that you can put in the report are gonna be over here in this little light gray box. So as you can tell, there's a lot of options already. And these are just the high level segments. You'll notice that each one of them has a little down arrow next to it. So if I come up here and go to level of detail, 
I can click on that and it opens up all of the different levels of detail that you can add into this report. So you can see campaign, ad group, ad. It's going to then highlight the row section because this is where this would go. You would not add campaign as a column. So if we just click on campaign really quick, it automatically applies it to the rows. And then you can start to see that there are some different changes that come down in here. Like this one is now gray because this field is incompatible with campaign. You can't have the campaign label and the campaign name in the same report. There are going to be many different instances where certain metrics or levels of detail, all the different breakdowns are incompatible and Google will gray those out to tell you that it's incompatible. You can also come up here to the customization section, these three little dots. You can hide anything that is incompatible if that makes it easier for you. I personally don't like to do that because I wanna know what I can still use and I wanna know which fields it's incompatible with because as you can see here, it tells you that it's incompatible with campaign, which for my example right now, I only have campaign chosen. But imagine that you already have 20 different options here. You wanna know which one it's incompatible with so you can rethink, re-strategize your report and still get the data that you need. For the sake of example today, I'm just going to make a very basic campaign level report because it's going to take far too long for me to go through each of the different fields that you have available. But there are some high level looks that I'll show you. So you can utilize any of the different performance metrics in here, clicks, impressions, click through rate. If you scroll down, you can see that I'm still in that <laughs> regular performance section and we've got all these different metrics that are available. And then we start getting into the other fields that are down here. So there are lots of different options that you can add to the reports that you're building. And you can either go through and scroll through these individually, open them up and see what's available. Or if you know what you want to add in, like for this example, I'm gonna add in clicks and impressions. You can come up to the search field and just type them in. I just typed in click. You can see all of the different options of metrics that you can add that have click in it. All of these are also eligible because they're not grayed out. So I'm just gonna click on clicks and add it to the report. Now, like I said, I'm gonna do a very basic example of a report for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up and then we'll talk through how we can customize that report moving forward. I have a pretty basic report here that is effectively just looking at campaign performance for clicks and impressions by month. So all of my data is going to be broken out by monthly breakdowns and the campaign level just to show me the clicks and impressions that I had over the first quarter effectively of this year. Although I have the campaign names blurred out, you can tell that a lot of these campaigns don't actually have any performance for this time frame. So I'm going to start to filter the reports that I have a little bit and customize them. So let's say I want to come in here and I want to just get rid of any campaign that doesn't have any clicks associated with it. I can click on the drop down here. I can click filter and now you can say that clicks need to have a value of greater than zero. You can customize whatever you want this drop down to be. So if you need it to be greater than or equal to, does not equal, whatever you want to have. I just need it to be greater than zero. Click apply. And now my report is filtered only for campaigns that had clicks within each given month of the report that's on here. As you can tell, there were other filters that we could apply. So basically we can come down and we can sort by either high to low or low to high, or you can add some conditional formatting to this to say if the clicks value is higher than, let's say 1000, you can then customize the color that you want it to be. I'm gonna do with red, just so it's a little bit easier to see. We click apply. And now you can easily visually see which campaigns in which month had over a thousand clicks. So there's a lot of ways that you can customize the view of what you wanna see in this reports builder. I'm gonna clean off all the filters that I have for clicks for right now, just to get those out of here. You can also filter for the campaign name or any of the different options that you have here. So you can filter to either choose selected campaigns or you can exclude certain campaigns if you want to, just the way you would in the interface. If you decide that you need to reorganize some of the data that you have in the report, this is pretty simple. You can come over here and if you wanted to have the month in the first position or you thought that impressions needed to be in the furthest left column, all you have to do is come over and click the six dots here, drag, and then you can reorder which options you have in place. So let's say we also wanted to move impressions up. We can easily do that. And now they've realigned to move the different data so that it works for whatever type of report you're trying to pull. Overall, this reports builder is pretty easy to use. And you can see here that it's just going to build your data tables off to the left exactly how you want it to. So let's say you want to get rid of one of the metrics. So we just want to get rid of campaign, for example. You can come in here and click this drop down, and then you can easily delete 
the campaign filter. And now it's gonna show you your report that is now just based on clicks and impressions by month. Pretty easy to get rid of any fields that you don't wanna have in there as well. So you'll remember, there are lots of different types of reports that we can build. And up here at the top of this builder section right here, you can see that we still have table selected. If you decide while you're building a report that you want to change the type of report that you have, you can click from this drop down, and all of the previous options that you had whenever you first created the report will pop back up. So you're not stuck building only a table. You don't have to abandon all of your changes and move back. So let's say I just wanted to change this to a bar chart. Now we can see that we have the month breakdown on the left, and then we have impressions and clicks and their relative bar charts in the tables here. It has selected custom axis because for those of you who are paying attention, in some of these months, we have clicks looking pretty close to impressions, even though they are very far off. In this month, we only had 21,000 clicks, but 1.4 million impressions, but they look pretty close. That's because this custom axis has been chosen. You can see that the axes are different. This one is in the millions for impressions, and this one is in the tens of thousands for clicks. If I come over here and turn this off, it then takes things down to the same scale because there's no longer an axis up here. We're only using this down here, but as you can tell, that makes it really difficult to see the variance in the click performance month over month. For this specific example, or any data example that you have that's similar to this, where the chart is very hard to read for one of the metrics, you should be able to come up here and click the custom Y axis, and then it'll populate the data this way, which is just a bit easier to read. We can also choose to segment the data, let's say by time series, we can make a line chart. Now, because I already had my data selected by month, this is what it pre-selected for me and everything looks about the same. This is what it would have been. And we still have the custom Y axis in place, but you'll notice that the row that I had here that was for month has gone away because this is already inherently a time report. Now, instead we've chosen for a monthly report here, but you can adjust that pretty easily without having to use the metrics and dimensions on the right. So you can adjust it to be daily, weekly, quarterly, yearly. So if I wanted it to be daily, could easily adjust to that. And then it'll recalculate and show me all of my impressions and clicks by day over the period of time that I have it in here. Once you've built the report the way that you want it to, there are lots of different adjustments that you can make. You can either download it right away, which for this type of report, it'll show only a PDF or a PNG because this is a line chart. This is going to be visual. You're not going to get the data points with it. It's literally only going to show you what you have off to the left. I've gone ahead and downloaded this one already. And this is what the report looks like as a PNG. There's literally nothing else you can do to it. It just shows you the exact same chart that you see in the interface. Just know that when you download a time series chart, this is what it's gonna look like. But if we change our chart type back to a table, we will first have to add the month category back in. Then when we go up to download, we'll have a lot more options. We'll have the more traditional options of CSV, Excel CSV, all these different options that you have, you still have PDF down at the bottom, but just know that file type will change based on the type of report you're using. Next, you can schedule the report. If this is something that you want to have show up in somebody's inbox on a regular basis, you can schedule it. Here you have a number of different options. You can choose who you want the report to go to, which this will be a preset list of users who have been opted into the reporting section. So you'll need to customize the list of people that shows up there. I'm not gonna click on that because we'll just have to blur out a bunch of things, but effectively each one of the users with an email address that can get a report, you just check the box next to their name and they're good to go. Next, you choose the frequency that you want the report to come. It can be either one time, daily, weekly, monthly, weekdays, Monday to Friday, or the first day of the month. If you choose something like weekly, you then get to choose the hour that you want it to run. You can choose within an hour increment, and then you get to choose which day of the week you want it to run. So any of the individual days. The same types of customizations are also gonna show up for daily, you'll get to choose the hour. For monthly, you'll get to choose the day of the month and the hour of that month. And then lastly, you get to choose the file type. However you want it to come in, you get to choose the format that you want that to be emailed. Then you can choose to compress the file I typically compress files just because I never know totally how big a report is going to be depending on what's going on over time. I usually check this box, but you don't have to. Just know that if your report starts to get bigger and bigger, it's going to take a little bit longer to send, it's going to take longer to open, that sort of thing, because it's not compressed. Then lastly, you can add the report name down at the bottom. This will populate if you have already adjusted the report name over up in the top left, but since I haven't done that, it's throwing a little bit of an error. And then once you fill all this out, this save option will show up, but because I haven't done it, it's not going to. So for now, I'm just going to click cancel. 
the last options you have are up here above the dimensions and metrics section. So first you can save the report effectively just like we did, but we don't assign any sort of emailing, scheduling, anything like that. If you click save, it's really just going to save the report with the name as it is. But let's say just like with any other document or maybe an Excel sheet that you're working with, you get to a certain point in that process and you want to save something as a separate report, you can use save as in the same way that you would for any other types of documents. So if you get to a certain point and you say, I wanna save this as a different report, you can click save as, it'll populate a new name field so you can save it as a new name and then you can revert back to the previous report. The last one is going to be reset which is going to restore the report to its last saved state. So again if you get to a point where you're working on something you've saved it a few times and then you decide that you want to save it as a new report but you need to revert back you can click reset and it'll go back to the last time that this individual report was saved. Now that we've gone through the whole builder, let's talk about the last couple of ways that we can customize reports. So the first thing I wanna do is go back to the report manager. So I'm just gonna come up here and click back. It's gonna ask if you wanna stay or leave. So now I'm gonna get into kind of how you manage reports. So you can see here, there is one saved report, it tells you the creation date, access date, the date range that it has, and then who it was created by and any of the scheduling available. At a very quick high level, if you hover over the report itself, you'll see there's a pencil next to the report name. You can adjust it here and you can adjust the scheduling and the format very easily from this reports manager. So if you need to make changes to it, you can do that. Or if you wanna make changes to the report itself, you can click on the report name here and it'll open up the builder and you can adjust it, make your changes, click save, and then this new report will be saved here. Earlier I talked about predefined reports and I wanted to go through the custom builder first to show you how the builder worked, but now let's talk about the reports themselves. And there are going to be a lot of options that show up here, but I think it's even more impressive if you click the view all button. Now we can see all the predefined reports that Google has built for us already. Right now this basic section is open, so I'm gonna close that so you can see the different sections of reports that we have basic, time, conversions, labels, extensions, other, and each one of these has a handful of different reports in it. So if you decide you need a report based on your ad extensions, you can open this up and there is a predefined report for each extension type within the account. Same thing would be for shopping. If you're trying to get some insights but you don't know where to start, you can come in here to a predefined report, look up the shopping brand, product type, store ID, whatever you wanna have in here. There's lots of different types of reports. So let's just say that I wanted to go in and I wanted to find a conversions report based on the conversion action name. I can come in here very easily, click open, and Google will open that report for me in the builder with the predefined fields over here. And then I can customize it to my heart's content. But basically this just gives you a starting point so that you don't have to build a report from scratch. Clearly this one doesn't have lots of different fields available, but there is one more way I want to show you that you can find these predefined reports. And that's going to be back in the main campaign section of the Google Ads interface. At the very beginning of this demo, I said there were two ways to find those predefined reports. A lot of you probably already saw them. But if you come over here, rather than going into the top navigation, you can click the reports icon above your campaign manager. And you'll notice that a lot of these look very similar to the ones that we just saw in the campaign builder. So if we go over to basic and we click on campaign, this is going to open the campaign predefined report for us in the report builder. Almost invariably, there's going to be some option like this that shows up that tells you not all parts of the report are shown because the filters were removed. It's usually fine. It pretty much has everything that you need in there. So you can either go back because you want to remove some of the filters or just click OK. And here you can see there are lots of different options already chosen because there's campaign state, type, campaign name, and then all the different columns of performance metrics that we have here. So it's very easy to get all of the different data points that you need out of Google Ads, whether you choose a predefined report or if you just start from scratch. But this reports builder makes it so much easier to get lots of data into a single report so that you can then download it and utilize it to your heart's content there. You can have it regularly emailed to you, or you can simply get the data that you need right within the reports interface. Maybe you make some sort of visual bar chart so that you can go back to your campaigns and make the optimizations quickly. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.